just needed to step out and call you and tell you what an incredible uh, ladies retreat that we're having. I think someone much with a much smaller head has been wearing my microphone, but we'll get it there in a minute. Amen. Um, and uh, she was hoarse, and she said, man, I just had to step out. She said, the preaching was over. The service was pretty much over. And uh, she said, Joanna got a word from the Lord, and she came up and, said, and shared that, that the Lord wanted every woman over 40 to pray for every woman under 40. And she said, that's been an hour and a half, and they're still in there going at it, praying for one another. And incredible things happening. And she said, I just wanted to call you before you go to bed and just let you know. She said, I got to get back in there. But I told you that to tell you that um, Joy, my niece, Joy Langston, is doing the music for the ladies' retreat. And she had a dream on Thursday before, a few days before the ladies' retreat. And in the dream, she was at ladies' retreat. But Noah, her little boy, was run over by a car. And uh, it was just a terrible nightmare. But in the, in the dream, someone told her, he's okay, no broken bones. She texted us the dream. And my wife responded, the enemy is just trying to scare you, uh, torment you, uh, and keep you, you know, uh, just, just rebuke that, pray against it. Well, they went off to ladies' retreat. Friday, Nathaniel, my nephew, and Noah, my great-nephew, were with me in, in Shiloh and Brooklyn uh, for several hours that day, and, and then um, they decided to stay the night. So they ran home to grab a bag and come back and spend the night at our house. Well, uh, as Nathan w let Noah out of the car, uh, as he was closing the doors, Noah darted around the car and out into the street and was hit by a car and thrown through the air and witnesses said he bounced like a stuffed, like a, like a teddy bear, somebody told me. He just bounced down the road. And Nathan called and said, Noah's been hit by a car and hung up. Didn't tell us where they were, didn't tell us anything. So we had to kind of deduce, well, it's got to be at their house. They just left here a few minutes ago. So I broke every law in the books. Uh, I put my flashers on, and my daughter reminded me, the lot, one of the taillights is out, so everybody thinks you're turning left, Dad. But I just went through every red light. I went through every stop sign, blowing my horn, got there as quick as I could. And when I arrived on the scene, uh, the police officers stopped me at the ambulance and said, he's okay. He's going to be fine. And as it turns out, amen, they did keep him overnight. Uh, scrapes, bruises. Uh, but after all the CAT scans and everything else, a uh, hairline fracture in his pelvis, not enough to require surgery or treatment of any kind. Uh, he's discharged, and he's with mom at ladies' retreat <laughs> right now. So we do serve a God of miracles. We do serve a God of miracles, amen. It could have been much, much worse. And of course, the, what the enemy meant, what the enemy meant was to, to pull joy away from that lady's retreat and her gift and her talent and leave that retreat in the lurch without the music that they needed for this experience. But God said, you know what? Let me just let joy know a few days ahead what the enemy's up to. And so when it all happened, they were able to just pray, and she stayed right there through the whole drama, trusted God and her husband and me with the situation. Don't you love the Lord? Isn't he an amazing God? We do serve a God of miracles. You may be seated. Amen, amen, amen. Let me just jump right into this, if I may. Amen. Uh, Philippians 2, 9 through 11, Wherefore God hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess 
that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And then Ephesians 2 and 13, Now in Christ Jesus you who were once far off have been made near by the blood of Christ. And I think my monitor just went out. It looks like it got unplugged back there somewhere. Amen. Everybody said his name is greater and his blood is more powerful. Hebrews 10, 19, we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus. Say it with me. His name is greater and his blood is more powerful. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. In my name, it is assumed in the language, in my name they shall speak with new tongues. In my name they shall take up serpents, which does not mean pick up snakes. It means discern evil spirits. In my name, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. That doesn't mean on purpose. That means accidentally. In my name they shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Say it with me. His name is greater. Revelation 12, 11, and they have conquered him, meaning Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they loved not their lives even unto death. Let's say it again. His name is greater and his blood is more. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name. Everyone said the name. name. Of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Say it one more time. His name is greater and his blood is more powerful. Today is Baptism Sermon Sunday, something we do about four times a year here at Tapestry, uh, because two weeks from today is Baptism Sunday, where you will have the opportunity to go public with your faith in water baptism. That's June 26, Baptism Sunday. And many will be baptized, and I want to just take a moment to talk about the spiritual power behind the decision some of you will make today to sign the boards and to be baptized. Number one, Jesus instructed us to do so. And the scripture that we just read in Matthew 28, 19, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're instructed to do so. We're commanded to baptize, you're commanded to be baptized. Amen. And you know how important a person's last words are, especially in those old westerns, you know, those old war movies where the man is, you know, lying in, in, in a pool of blood, gasping out his last, especially if it's a treasure uh, or a mystery movie, you really don't want the guy to die until he tells somebody where it is or what really happened or who done it, right? The last words, right? And we often hear this about, about famous uh, people. Everybody's interested in the last words of famous people. Well, uh, the last recorded words of Jesus you would think would be pretty important words, right? Right? And here they are. We've we've already said them twice. He said, and these are some of his very last words. In fact, he's, he's floating up on a cloud. He's not even on the ground when he's saying these words. He's already starting off into heaven. And he says, all power. Say it with me, all power. All power is given me in heaven and earth, therefore. Now, Daddy used to say it like this. When you see a therefore... Go back and find out what it's there for. Therefore, go. Why is the therefore there? Because all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. And because I have all power, go and make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the word therefore connects those two verses. There's power in your baptism. There's the power of Jesus Christ in your baptism. Number three, baptism is a public declaration of our faith decision. Your first faith decision, we called it a fresh start, where you prayed a prayer and you made a decision and you started the journey. But baptism is where you go public with that. And, and Jesus examples this for us in Matthew 3.13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to be baptized by John. It's important to understand that the Jordan was probably the most public gathering place in Israel. People went there for every kind of reason. People went to the Jordan for drinking water. They went to the Jordan to wash their clothes. They went there to cool off and have a nice swim on a hot day. They went there to fish and catch supper. People gathered there for seminars, for preaching, for revivals, for every kind of public gathering you can imagine, a very public place, the Jordan. Jesus was baptized at the Jordan, a very public experience. And that's why when you're baptized, we ask you to invite everyone you know, your family, your friends, your co-workers, your classmates, and in front of all of them here on Baptism Sunday, you will show that I am identified with Jesus Christ. June 26th. June 26, you will have the opportunity to go public with your faith in front of everyone that you know. And uh, it is not only good for you, it's good for them. Amen. And it impacts. It's one of the most evangelistic services that we have at Tapestry. When so many unsaved and uncommitted to Christ people come simply to enjoy and celebrate and honor the baptism of their friend, family member. And as a result, amen, the Spirit of the Lord is able to begin a conversation with them on your baptism day. Wouldn't that be a great thing? And so, yes. And so some of you need to make that decision today to go all in, and baptism is how you do that. It's your next step after your fresh start. When you're baptized, you're saying, I'm not my own anymore. I'm taking a public stand with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm ready to etch this in stone. I, I'm ready to sign the contract. Amen. And part of this experience of, of baptism here at Tapestry is we'll ask you to write your story. In other words, how you came to faith, what Jesus is healing in your heart, uh, who played a significant role in your spiritual growth. Um, and we ask you just to write your story, and someone will read your story publicly while you are uh, getting in the waters uh, of baptism. And it's, you become the sermon for that day, and it's just such a powerful, powerful experience. Let's watch this video. So next Sunday, or two weeks from today, rather, you'll have the opportunity. But today, at the end of this sermon, you'll have your opportunity to sign your name to one of these boards and then give the attendants your information so that we can follow up with you on the details and also take with you as many of the invite cards. We've got some cards here that will be available for you. Take as many of them as you need, amen, to invite your friends, your family, your co-workers, your classmates, uh, etc. And, and so it's going to be a great time. And uh, the team will follow up with the details. I want you to understand today that the early church's original formula of baptism was always and only by immersion. That means dipped under the water uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. I meant to have the picture. Uh, uh, Henry and I were in 
uh, Spain a few weeks ago, a few, uh, few weeks ago in uh, Barcelona, and we, we went through the ruins uh, of a very early Christian church, pre-Catholic, very early Christian church. And it was from about uh, 300 A.D. And uh, so they had, you know, walkways that you could walk on and barricades. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I decided many years ago that the barricades are important. They're just not important for me, right? I mean, they serve a purpose. You can't just have everybody going everywhere, right? But some of us need to be, you know, in those places, right? And, and so, you know, you just got to know who you are, right? And, and so, uh, so, you know, we, we came to one place where there was a Roman tower, and it had a staircase, a modern staircase going up into it and a ramp, and, and there was a rope there. I said, why is that rope there? They obviously meant for us, when they built this museum, to see that tower, and now somebody, you know, COVID has just ruined everything. Somebody has decided now that it's unsafe uh, for us to go. And, and I looked around, and I didn't see anybody in any kind of uniform because I just wanted to ask. Yeah, sure I did. But there was nobody to ask. So, you know, I just had to take it upon myself to remove the rope and go into this ancient Roman town. It was so cool, right? And, 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 and Henry, you know, is just like trying to, you know, are you sure we can do this? Yeah, come on. And, and we, we, we toured the tower. And, and then we came back out. Well, when we found this church underground, and, there's a, and we looked down there, and there's this old ancient baptism font. And it's like the size of a jacuzzi. With steps going down in it, right? Because they weren't sprinkling back then. They, it was by immersion. And, and, and Henry, the faithful son and disciple that he is, I said, Henry, he said, I got you. And over the barricade he went, down, oh, climbing over the rocks and rubble of the archaeological dig, you know, things you're not ever supposed to touch, down into the ancient baptismal font. I have pictures of him. I wish we had him for this sermon. Maybe we can get him up for the second service uh, down in that font. So he got to be in the baptism font that some of the earliest Christians were baptized in 1,800 years ago. <clears throat> and it's significant that it was... A pool, a pool uh, of water, because that's how baptism uh, happened. You don't find sprinkling or, immer uh, or infusion for many centuries in church history. You can consult uh, history. You can read the Encyclopedia Britannica. You can read the Catholic Encyclopedia. You can read all of the encyclopedias of religion. And you will find that there is a congruency and agreement in every one of them that there was only one ancient baptism in Christianity and that that was always by immersion and always in the name of Jesus Christ. No one can test this. Not one source disagrees with that statement. And why does it matter? It matters because his name is greater and his blood is more powerful. Look at Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Wherefore God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Understand that when you ascribe all power and all deity and all the personification of God to Jesus Christ, you do not detract from the glory of God. In fact, you add to the glory of God. Put that verse back up there, guys. God highly exalted him, gave him a name which is above every name, that at his name every knee should bow, things in heaven, earth, etc., to the glory of God the Father. The, you don't take away glory from the Father when you give glory to the Son. You can't elevate Jesus without elevating the Father. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Him only shall you serve. Amen? 
<clears throat> when we focus on the name of Jesus, when we lift up the name of Jesus, we're not diminishing the Father. We're not diminishing the Holy Spirit. You've got to understand that while there are three great manifestations of God, three great revelations of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, there is only one God, and His revealed name is Jesus. Jesus is not one of the names of God. The Bible is very clear. Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus is the revealed name, one name. I wish somebody would say it with me one more time. His name is greater and his blood is more powerful. Listen, it was Jacob who wrestled with the angel of the Lord. And the angel said to Jacob, what's your name? And he said, my name is Jacob. But then Jacob said to the angel, what's your name? And the angel of the Lord was coy. He said the only answer Jacob got was, why do you want to know my name? Why do you ask my name? The angel of the Lord appeared to Manoah and predicted to him the birth of his son Samson, the mighty man. Manoah, like Jacob, asked him, what is your name? To which the angel of the Lord replied, a little bit more than with Jacob, why do you ask my name? You know it's a secret. His name was a secret. Throughout the entire Old Testament, Pedro, hundreds of titles, literally hundreds and hundreds of titles ascribed to our God. From Elohim and all of the variants, Adonai, Jehovah, all of the variants, so many other titles attributed, the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the prince of peace, the everlasting, so many, but never a proper name, a secret, the angel said. Moses, the greatest prophet in the Old Testament, Moses says to God at the burning bush, who do I tell them? sent me. It's like this. It's like this. Moses is saying, God, I know you've never told anybody your name, but Pharaoh is going to want to know. I've just always known you as the God of my fathers. You've just always been Elohim. But lots of people call their gods that. Can you give me a little more? And God did. God said, tell him I am. Why is that so significant? And we can preach lots of different things from that. But I think the greatest significance of I am is because all them other gods weren't. He's the I am, they're the they ain't. I am. I'm real. I'm really God. I, I am. <laughs> I exist. Amen. I am. Tell him, God said, tell that guy, I am has sent you. Oh, listen, when you know, you know. <laughs> this became the Jewish Yahweh, which literally means, by the way, Yahweh, translated I am, literally means I am he who makes things happen. I'm the one who does stuff. All those other, they don't do nothing. I'm the one who actually accomplishes something. I am he who makes things happen. And Yahweh, Yah, is the, is the foundation, the building block uh, it's where we, it becomes Jehovah, Yah, uh, be, uh, is, the, is the building block for Jehovah, which is the building block towards Jesus in the New Testament. Understand that when Paul had to preach 
uh, the gospel to the Gentile world, he had to give them language that they could grasp. And the Jewish language was not adequate in Paul's wise estimation. And so he literally renames with the, all of the other apostles' agreement and authorization. They literally uh, rename, you could say, uh, Jesus Christ from Yahweh, which then became Yeshua. We would be more familiar with Joshua. A lot of people get hung up on this stuff, uh, calling themselves Messianic Christians and all of that. Paul apparently uh, wasn't a Messianic Christian because he took Zeus... The God of gods to the Greeks, and he took Yah, Yahweh, Jehovah of the Jews, and he put them together and he said, I'm here to preach to you about Yah Zeus. Jesus. Jesus. And this Peter says, Peter, the chief of the apostles, in the verse we just read, takes that name Jesus, Yazus, and says, there's no other name under heaven given among men. Oh, listen, he's not a Jewish God, he's God, amen. He's not just an Old Testament God, he's God of both Testaments. And God, Paul said, of the Jews and of the Gentiles, amen, and uh, that's us, most of us. It might be a Jew or two uh, hanging around here in the periphery, but for the most part, amen, we are the Gentiles. Are you glad for Jesus? So there's this great secret that couldn't be revealed, not to Jacob, not to Manoah, not to Moses. It was too glorious. It was too great. Moses said in that same conversation, Lord, show me. No, I'm sorry. It was a later conversation. But Moses said, Lord, show me your glory. And God said, ah, I can't show you my glory. But I'll show you my history. I'll show you the backside of my glory. Or I'll show you my past tense glory. I can't can't show you my glory, but I can show you my past tense glory. And he gave Moses the book of Genesis. So everything we know from the book of Genesis predating Moses is what God showed him on the mountain. God was saying this to Moses. What is ahead is too great. I can't even let you see it, Moses. And you're the greatest prophet. But I'll let you see where I've been. I'll let you see what I've done. But what I'm going to do, I can't even reveal to you. Look, Isaiah said in 45, 15, Surely you are a God that hides yourself, O God of Israel. Surely you're a God that hides yourself, O God of Israel. Under the Old Testament law regime, the blood of bulls and goats did not place man in a standing high enough to allow him to view the glory of Jesus Christ. And this is why in John chapter 1, John gets a new spin on Genesis 1 when he says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. But John says it like this. That was Moses' view from the past tense looking back. But John is seeing it through the prism of Christ. And he says basically the same thing but better. He said in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shone in the darkness, and the darkness did not understand it. That was the true light, which lights every man that comes into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. He came into His own, and His own received Him not, talking about Jesus Christ. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on His name. The name. I heard Bill Johnson say Jesus is more than the good side of God. He's more than the good side of God. Understand Jesus is more than the Son of God. I'm going to mess with some of you today. But understand, yes, He's the Son of God, but He's not just the Son of God. Jesus is not just a part 
of the Godhead. He is a part of the Godhead, but not just a part of the Godhead. What do I mean by that? Let me let the scripture speak. Colossians 2, 6 through 9, paraphrased. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily or in physical form. Leave that up for a minute, guys. And you are, com- oh, let's go to the next one, and then we'll come back. And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in putting off the sins of the flesh, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. Go back to that previous verse. He says that Jesus is not just part of the Godhead, but in him, in Jesus Christ, dwells All the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That can only mean that when you see Jesus, you're not only seeing the Son, you're seeing the Father, and you're seeing the Holy Spirit. John said there's one throne in heaven and one that's set upon the throne, but then he describes him as being like Jesus, but also with the elements of the Father and the Holy Spirit. One physicality, John says, in heaven. We only have one physicality in the manifestation of God on the earth. Everywhere else talking about God being seen says no man can see God and live. And then we spend 33 and a half years with Jesus Christ. John said we touched him and we handled him amen because he was that element that personification that revelation of God that glory of God that we could relate to and interact with he wasn't just part of the Godhead not just the son of God but he is all the fullness of the Godhead bodily you cannot give too much praise and worship to Jesus Christ you cannot You cannot. He is God manifested in the flesh. You need to understand that. And I know these are deep waters. And a lot of mystery shrouds this. And this is why we don't don't make a big deal out of some of these discussions here at Tapestry. But I'm going to tell you the more praise and worship and honor you give to Jesus Christ the more you elevate the name of Jesus in your life the more you're elevating Godhead in your life the more you're elevating the Father in your life the more you're elevating the Holy Spirit there's no competition in the Godhead amen one God shout it with me one God oh that's in your Bible from from cover to cover amen and so he says based on that based on that he says you are buried with him in baptism you're complete in him and so to put off the sins of the flesh you're buried with him in baptism and risen with him through the faith of the operation of the spirit of God and this is why baptism is so important Hebrews 1, he is the express image of the person of God. And he received his name by inheritance from the Father. Two statements in that chapter. One, when you see Jesus, you're seeing God. When you see Jesus, he said, you're seeing the Father. Not only that, he received his name by inheritance from the Father. So if Jesus is the only revealed name for God in Scripture, here it says that it was inherited from the Father, so it is the name that also identifies all of the Godhead in heaven. The Son received, I didn't say it, the Scripture said it, the Son received His name by inheritance from the Father. It's legacy if you please. So, amen. Then Jesus Jesus says, I came, and so this is another verse, 14 of John, I came, uh, I'm sorry, 5 of John, I came in my Father's name. I came in my Father's name. And then he says in John 14, the Holy Ghost will come in my name. One name, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost 
revealed in one name. I don't even understand it all, guys, so I don't expect you to. I see the question marks. I see you looking at me saying, I don't understand. Look, it's the Godhead. Great is the mystery of godliness. God manifested in the flesh, seen of angels, just all of that. Amen. It's a great mystery, but just understand this. The name of Jesus is not a part of God. It's not one of the labels of God struggling for equal place with other titles or other other labels it is the preeminent identifier it is heaven's power of attorney the name above all names the name the name that was a secret it was a secret for thousands of years even with God's people and God's prophet We're talking about the glory that Moses couldn't see, the name that Jacob couldn't hear, and Manoah couldn't discover. But again, Peter comes along and says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I wish somebody would get excited about the name of Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. Amen. We used to sing a song, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, oh, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. And that's all I can remember of that song. But there's so much power in the name of Jesus. Some of you have been in crisis situations in, in a blink of an eye car careening off the road or heavy equipment leaning over uh, on a job site or whatever the case you didn't have time to say now dear heavenly father we come to you in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit and we beseech all of the ancient prophets and apostles and we stand here in the king james version of the bible and we would like to address the holy god of heaven and say no 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 you just said jesus That's all you had to say. That's all you had to say. You said, Jesus Christ. Amen. And he heard you. Amen. Heaven's power of attorney. Amen. So much power. All the miracles that we see in the Old Testament. God preserving a nation, exalting them over all the neighbor nations. All that God was able to accomplish through the blood of bulls and goats and lambs and doves. What can happen When one drop of Jesus' blood drips upon one life. I'm telling you today, his name is greater and his blood is more powerful. His name is greater and his blood is more powerful. Philippians 2 and 9, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. When you recognize Musicians come and understand how awesome, powerful, majestic, central, and absolute deity Jesus Christ is. It doesn't take away from the glory of the Father. It doesn't take away from the glory of the Holy Spirit. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word... And the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. In fact, in the Latin Vulgate, the word three there is the word trinitus. Where we get the trinity. And he said here, this trinity is one. One God. One revealed name. I want you to understand the power that is in the name of of Jesus Christ. You know, we used to play as kids with a magnifying glass, starting fires. I don't know if anybody's ever done that. Right? You could even use the bottom of a broken Coke bottle, but if you can get that prism just right and catch the rays of the sun, it takes all of that, that energy and power that's kind of distributed across 
the landscape. It grabs it and it focuses it in and creates a sort of laser. And you can, you can set twigs and leaves and things on fire. Amen. Through that, that focused energy of the sun. Can I, can I tell you that the name of Jesus is like that? All power, he said, in heaven and earth is given to me. Jesus is that magnifying glass of God. Oh, friend, that centralizes and focuses all of that power and all of that glory into one situation, into one specific need. Amen. Heaven holds its breath. Angels stand at strict attention. Even God said, I can't tell you his name until you're ready. And then it happened. A blessed young virgin, startled by a bright light in her window, sees a shining man. And the angel came in to Mary and said, Hail thou that are highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. And here it is. Heaven's leaning over the balconies, waiting thousands of years. And thou shalt call his name. I'm not just going to tell you his name. I'm going to let you name him with his name. Jesus. A 14-year-old girl. All the glory revealed of two testaments. I think trumpets were sounding in heaven. That long-awaited revelation. Heaven's power of attorney. The name. Because his name is greater. His blood is more powerful. And when you are baptized two weeks from today, that name and that blood is invested in your life. Name your problem. Name your poison. Name your weakness. Name your sin. Name your habit. Identify the worst part of you, the worst thing in your life. Name your disease. Name your limitation. The name of Jesus, we sang it last Sunday, is higher than all names, than any sickness, than any problem. At the mention of his name, they bow, they fall. The name is Je of Jesus is higher than them all. The name of Jesus. He's here in this place today for anyone that will call upon his name. The Bible said, whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I wonder who is in this house today that is not yet committed and surrendered their life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you you're missing out on the greatest power on planet earth. You're missing out on the greatest opportunity and privilege of any human to take the name of Jesus as your own personal possession. To take the identity of the manifested Son of God as yours. Wear his name as a disciple, as a child of God. To wear any struggle, any trouble, any setback, any heartache, any problem, there's a solution, there's an answer. The Bible said, the name of the Lord, David the psalmist, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into and are saved. Before we take, give you the opportunity for baptism, I wonder who would.
what's just like to surrender their lives to, to him today in repentance. Fresh start prayer. They just say, I'm ready to commit my life. Maybe your wife or girlfriend is away at the ladies' retreat. Wouldn't it be great for them to come home not only with their revival, but to find you in a revival? For them to come home to a new husband, to a new boyfriend. Hey, I know you had a great ladies retreat, but let me tell you, I gave my life to the Lord today. I made the decision. I'm going to get baptized in two weeks. Amen. I want your obedience in this place. Father, I pray right now as we close this sermon that whoever is in this house that's not ready to meet you at your coming, that has not made their eternity right with God, that has not surrendered their life to your Lordship, they come into relationship with you in the power of the gospel I pray right now today is the day of salvation and the acceptable time God draw them to you today draw them to you today if you'd like to pray this prayer with me and begin that relationship I want you to just to say these words just repeat after me we're all going to say them together so you don't feel listened to and maybe there's someone in this house today that is praying this prayer very first time or for the first time in a very long time. Amen. I want you to just just talk from your heart. I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you some words. You can add your own words as well. But let's just let's just seal the deal. Let's just make the decision and let's just let's just let him know. Let's tell him right now. Let's say God of heaven, I believe that you are the true and living God. And I believe you sent your son Jesus Christ down to this earth born of the Blessed Virgin Mary to live and die on the cross of shame for my sin. So Lord, I ask you to forgive me for my sin. I thank you for your great sacrifice on that cross for paying the price for me that I could have fellowship with God. Forgive me. I surrender my life to you today. I will endeavor to serve you and live a life that pleases you from this day forward. Cleanse me of all my sins. Come into my heart. Change me and save me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Listen, that's where it starts, guys. That's where it starts. There's so much more so much more. There's more baptism. That's your next step. I wonder if we could all stand together. The band is going to sing. I'm going to get out of the way. The attendants are coming forward. I wonder who in this house, few or many, one is enough that's ready to go public with their faith in the waters of baptism. If the Lord has been dealing with your heart today while I preached, about being baptized, or maybe you came in here today already ready, waiting for the next opportunity for baptism. All you need to do now is slip out of your seat, come forward, amen, and sign the board. God bless you, amen, as you make your decision.